Tari Pagacha in commanding fashion. No questions, no ifs, no buts. Drops Jonas Vingegaard. Sketchy descents, Pantani's training climb. This was Torino Adriatico stage six. They did Mount Monte Carpegna twice, six Ks, nine and a half percent. Jumbo Visma were controlling for Vingegaard, who was here, but behind Pagacha on GC. And we just heard that Primoz Roglic is doing Torino Adriatico this year. And the best place to watch Torino live is GCN Plus. You can get 15% off an annual pass through my link down below. Territory restrictions do apply. Go and check that out to watch it live next week. But last year, this is the Queen stage. They finished with the descent. A breakaway was up the road with Quickstep, who'd put Alaphilippe, the world champion, in it, as well as Honoré. Avonapol was not that far behind on GC. He's in the group here. Richie Port was, I think, sitting in fourth. Bahrain victorious. We're going for Mikel Landa. And before Garpena properly starts, there's this long drag, which had already thinned the group and just makes the race all that much harder. Davide Formolo comes to the front, UAE's team. You'll notice very different here to the team they're taking to Paris Nice on Sunday because of the different requirements of each race. Formolo, Mike Soler getting Jumbo Visma out the way. It's time for us to pace, make this race hard. This is the first ascent. They do it twice. They were able to put Avonapol under pressure, who you see fighting. Jumbo Visma for Pagacha's wheel. He has his two probably best teammates for this stage up the road. Gagenhart, Port, Maas, Hindley, who later win the Giro after this race. Aaron Baru in the break. They drop Benoit Colsner-Froy. Simmons was going for KOM points. And quick step strategy, I guess, was to have Alaphilippe ahead so that if anything did go wrong with uh, Avonapol, you could help as a technical descent as well. Or maybe he was just going for the stage. But Micah ramped up the pace. And this is what UA did in the Tour de France. In fact, they almost always do this when Micah's pacing. He goes to the front after Soler pulls off and paces hard. And almost immediately, Avonapol cannot respond. A really curious stage for Avonapol because he did this first ascent slower than he did the second ascent and it was probably because of the irregular pacing of Micah because after this Micah he keeps the pressure on as Simmons drops the other guys in the breakaway but the group doesn't thin out anymore in fact a few riders that were under pressure started to come back a little bit and it seemed like Micah really accelerated got even to pull off the back who's written about three seconds four seconds behind the group but then he didn't want to split the race up completely it was more to see who was put under pressure who slipped back and in fact when he looks back and sees that even Paul is chasing through this corner i assume you could see him he ups it a little bit more alaphilippe's going to wait ahead and what do we know from tari pagacci you saw on the tour de france 2020 two 20 minute climbs followed by a descent when he won on Paris that stage after the crosswind stage, that is what he's the best in the world at just about. And then you add in cold conditions like this, you can see the snow at the top is almost untouchable. That's why UAE made the race hard. Bahrain, you saw this in the Bilbao descending video, they put Bilbao off the back, uh, pacing for Lander into the descent, which was a mistake. It's a really technical descent, about one car width or two feet. Pandas wide, especially with the snow. And Caruso pushing immediately created gaps. Soler was off the back. He nearly crashes and then Landa kind of goes to the front end for the rest of the technical part of the descent nothing really much happens but Micah who was in this group and was there at that moment I don't know where Micah goes can anyone tell me like I look in the valley afterwards there's no Micah did he have a mechanical did he crash and we get onto the wider roads now into the town because they're going to loop back through Carpena Simmons ahead and it was only here that Bahrain or Bill could go on the front but it's not as technical even though he does have the aero advantage and he's going to get mowed down eventually by first for Simmons who's facing for Chicone. I don't I mean, I guess that's fine, but it was Mark Soler who, I mean, Soler is such a versatile, strong rider to be able to do this. He was good on the Galibier. He's a really strong rider. Alaphilippe had been pulling favor to Paul. He's gone out of the race, but no Micah. So how would the climb play out? Would they be able to pace UAE without their premium climbing domestique, the Tari Pagacha, who's back in this group? Whatever happened to him, it's going to keep me up at night. Maybe a simple Google search will tell me the answer. Vingegaard's second wheel, mask behind, Lander there. They all need to gain time on Pagacha. In fact, UAE don't really need to do anything. They probably would have been happy for Soler could have paced the whole climb and then Pagacha could win the sprint. But with Giacconi attacking, Aronsman is dropped and then Lander goes to the front. This is always... And we'll probably see this in one of the three one-week World Tour races coming up this month. We are spoiled, by the way, at the start list for them. But riders riding for maybe third or the podium spot on GC and how that influences the, the race playing out. Because Port's off the back and Lander wants to put time into him. Otherwise, 
it, it doesn't make too much sense to me, <laughs> basically, with Tadej Pogacar, the back-to-back Tour de France champion at this moment, in the wheel for ages, under pacing like that. The only explanation to me is him wanting to keep Port behind to move up into third, uh, but they go through Pantani Corner. You can see it kicks up. There's some really steep kilometers in Carpeña, and Pogacar steps off Lander. Nil response, nada from Vingegaard, from Mas, from Landa. And Pagaccia we knew from Strada Bianca, which was two days before this race, or not this stage, but before Torreno started last year, where he had a 40k solo. He was in great shape. Vingegaard, though, I, I, I don't know what his gripe was with Landa, because Landa had just been pulling on the front the whole time. Port comes back. These three, just four, decide to give uh, Pagaccia extra time. But like, why would it be Lander's responsibility to chase Pagaccia? Vingegaard was in Pagaccia's wheel, and Lander had been pulling for ages and ages, and he just couldn't respond when Pagaccia stepped off. He gets to a flatter section. We know this is advantage Pog. He's got more raw power than the four lightweight guys behind him. Yeah, immediately he's gone out to 30 seconds because he's better than the other guys on this stage, but also because I think they were like, well, He's gone, he's too good, and they start thinking about second and third on GC. Perhaps Lander did, perhaps Vingegaard was thinking that. Port was just trying to TT his way back. And this was the second part of the Avonapol curiosity this stage. Him asking Mark Soler for a bid on, even though Avonapol's Pagatch's GC competitor. Soler gives it to him anyway. Good guy, Soler. And Avonapol chugs down... Uh, whatever's in that bid on. And 4Ks later on the climb, Pagacha has a minute 11 GC done. And 20 minute climbs, I know they did it twice, but on a 20 minute climb to take a minute 30 like this by Pagacha, even if they were finessing behind, is a really dominant performance. The only thing that could stop him was the sinuous descent into town. And he was on the radio a bit too late into that corner and didn't break quickly enough. And again, what's going to happen in the group behind? We know that Port's not a great descender. Mars had a lot of descending trouble last year. Vingegaard and Lander are very, very good descenders. And unfortunately for Mars, this was his season. Basque Country, Terreno Adriatico. I can't wait to see him at Terreno against Roglic next week crashing. Pagacha able to do it at his own pace. I mean, these are big sweeping right-handers that double back on themselves, and he only nearly made one mistake. You touch the ice on the side of the road, it's good night. Port gets distance into this corner, the same one Pagacha nearly had trouble in before, and maybe Caruso did. He's off the back. His third on GC is done. Mars has crashed, so it's just Landista and Vingegaard chasing Pog, but you ain't taken back a minute 30 on Pagacha, especially when they get onto the wide. I mean, in contrast to the road they were just on during the descent proper, these roads look almost too easy. It's like you, someone narrow these up to make it a bit more interesting. And Pog's got the horsepower. He ain't bring, being brought back. Just like on Prati Tativo the year before, Pagacha in Torreno Adriatico wins the Queen stage ahead of Jonas Vingegaard, Mikhail Lander, dominant performance, very resistant to cold and fatigue in the legs beforehand. Let me know down below. How do you think they're going to go next week, head-to-head -head at Paris-Nice? Pagacha's previously had the upper hand in one week's against Vingegaard. We'll have coverage of every stage of Toronto on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. Go and subscribe to that if you haven't already. I'll see you next week. Ciao.